Thank you for listening to the Data is My Science podcast, the show that makes data your passion. With your host, Dapper Data. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Data is My Science podcast. This your boy, Dapper Data. As usual, I always bring on these special guests and stuff, you know. I appreciate y'all uh, tuning in once again. Um, today, I got some very special guests, as usual, always special guests, but um, I've been bringing on a lot of people that's pretty close to me. Uh, one of them being, uh, well, I got two guests uh, today, um, just like last last episode, um, my boy Ayo Odenide. What's up, Ayo? How you doing? How you doing? Thanks for having me, Bobby. Appreciate it. <laughs> Kenny Claire, what's up? Say what's up. What's going on, guys? So these are two experts, you know, in their field of IT. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about data ops, uh, DevOps. We're going to talk a little bit about the cloud. We're going to talk a little bit about big data. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to tie all together and stuff. You know, usually I talk about data science, but I'm taking it a different route, you know, trying to get some experts out there in the field of IT. Um, but I want to introduce them first. So we got my boy Kenny uh, on the on the on the call. So Kenny, man, I've known this dude since probably 2003. Same thing with Io, uh, Bowie State University, of course. I'm bringing all my BSU people on BSU, BSU all BSU? day. BSU, <laughs> sure. I got uh, um, Io and Kenny, man. I've known them since the same around the same time frame, 2003, and uh, uh, we actually met at the science engineering and math program. So we was all in there together where we started off. It was like a STEM program where they bring in people, um, just like I talked about in one of my episodes before, you bring in people um, that, that that are trying to, I think you are, you're already in the school, right? Pretty much, you are in the school, but you're trying to start early and trying to, trying to grab uh, some of that yep. information early and stuff and get ahead and everything like that in your, in your field. And most of the time is, well, all the time is math, science, engineering. Uh, technology, something like that. Uh, but for Kenny, um, man, I was his best man. So we're really close to let you know how close we are. And, uh, you know, I, I always whip his butt in basketball. So don't worry about that, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but we had some dope times, man, together, man. You know, I'm not going to dig too deep into the to the party times and stuff. But, you know, we didn't have some experiences, man. Uh, we, we were in computer science together. Have we ever taken a class? Together? Yeah, we took yeah we took a lot of classes together actually. We did. Yes, man. Too much yeah. partying, man. I don't even remember. That. <laughs> That's all good. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I know. I know we was in computer science. I know the major we was in together, but I didn't mm-hmm. know that uh, we took any classes together, man. I yeah, for sure. We took the same teachers and stuff. But yeah, Kenny, man, tell them a little bit about yourself, man. What you do, man? Where you work at? Things like that. All right. Uh, I'm Kenneth Clare. Um, I graduated from Bowie State in 2008. Uh, like Bobby said, we all met each other in 2003. Um, going into Bowie, uh, didn't, I knew I wanted to be something dealing with computers. Mm-hmm. So I just did computer science. Like They had computer science and computer tech. Um, I didn't really know the difference between the two. So I was just <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to just go with computer science. Right. Um, by the time I graduated, I realized that is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> oh, for real? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, like, looking back at it, you know, I probably would have chose C-Tech, but I'm definitely not mad that I chose the yeah. computer science route. But, um, yeah, after I graduated, um, I had a job working at Six Flags uh, with some other C-Tech majors from Bowie State. Mm. Uh, I was in the IT, I was on the IT team there. So, you know, we worked with the point of sale systems there, the networking there, like mm-hmm. everything. So, you know, that was a fun job. That was cool. Yeah. Met some cool people there. So you got a chance to, uh, with that, you got a chance to do more C-Tech work than right. the computer science work. Right. I that. did, I did zero computer science work <laughs> after, <laughs> after I graduated, like zero, none. Right, 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 right. So, but that, like, but that probably, that probably did help you out that probably sliced you a little bit made you feel more comfortable because you had to think outside the box and all that stuff you know you got a chance exactly. to do the computer science route so yep. it definitely helped out with that though yep like when i graduated i was and they was like uh go look in active directory and do this and i was like 
what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Google. Like, Come on now. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, all right, whatever. So, you know. Um, but yeah, so I did that. Um, then a couple years after, or a couple months after I graduated, I landed a job at CSC as a system mm -hmm. admin. I worked that for a couple years, you know, did some Windows and Solaris administration, did some network administration there as well. Um, from there, I moved on to uh, government contracting where mm -hmm. I did more VMware, uh, networking, Linux, and Windows administration. So, you know, I've kind of touched a lot of technologies throughout my career so far. So I can uh, definitely say, you know, it's been a it's been a journey yeah, <laughs> since yeah, I graduated. Yeah. Like, you, you know, pretty it's been much touched everything. Yeah. I mean, it's. And, you know, with my new role now, um, I'm DevOps engineer. That's my title. Mm -hmm. I've had this title or I've had this role for, I want to say about six months now, six mm -hmm. to seven months. So, you know, I'm just now getting acclimated into this role and learning the ins and outs of DevOps. So it's a, it's a different shift for me, I'll say. But, you know, having that computer science background definitely is uh, helping me out in this role. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Yeah. I mean, computer science, we'll talk about it a little bit later, you know, after after I uh, bring on uh, IO, but uh, computer science was definitely something that um, that I feel like, you know, connected a lot of people, you know, together. You know what I'm saying? You think about it, a lot, a lot of people in our crew, computer science and stuff, we stuck together uh, afterwards, uh, stuck together afterwards. But then also, you know, computer science helps you kind of think outside the box a little bit. Definitely, you know, sure. um, more than a lot of the other majors and stuff. So, you know, we talked about a little bit before this, we was like, hey, you know, computer science might have been that golden ticket to be able to say, well, I can do everything. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> if I can do computer science, I can do anything you want, man. Yeah, Shoot, exactly. I, one time I thought, I thought that I could uh, become a financial major. If I, I mean, a, fi <laughs> a, fi a finance person, no, no, bull. you know, I, I, I was I'm like, you. you know, I was like, man, let me get, let me, I can do anything. I just, let me just order these books off Amazon real quick for accounting, finance. And I'm just going to read them real quick. If I had the yep. time, I probably would, 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 would be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, that's how, that's how real computer science can get. All, all those you. math classes, man, those yeah. joints definitely helped out. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 no doubt, man. And uh, so IO, man, IO, me and IO, again, uh, we went to Bowie State together, you know, science, engineering, math program, um, all that good stuff. But we were actually roommates at one point. You know, he was on the other side. You know, we had four people to a, to a, to a dorm room um, apartment style, but he was on the other side. So we had some good time together. You know, and he's out there, man, uh, hollering at y'all all the way from Cali, man. So that dude is, we, we out here on the East Coast and stuff, you know. <laughs> so he's on the west side for sure exactly exactly you know so yeah io man he's had a good run man you know this is uh him and kenny man they're like brothers to me um and and io has you know he has an interesting story you know i'll let him tell it but you know he didn't he wasn't always uh in 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 technology you know what i'm saying and so he can give you a little bit about his background and everything so io man go ahead tell him a little bit about yourself man yeah uh first of all just thank you for having me on appreciate it um so yeah my name is io um, I went to Bowie State just, just like, you know, Bobby and Kenny as well. So graduating, I think I graduated 2007, um, oh, because the goal was, oh, about, about a couple of months, about a couple of months. It, right, wasn't, right, it right. wasn't anything like anything <laughs> big or whatever. Technically I started, I graduated 08, uh -huh. because 07 my paperwork, because I had to retake that physics class. But the thing, oh. <laughs> we're not going to go into that one right there. We're not going to go into that, not yet, not we may. <laughs> But I would say that physics class was something that actually sparked a new interest in me because if mm -hmm. I if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, mm -hmm. so it was so yeah. So I mean, get to get to buoy was all about like I I had this this thing in my mind like hey, well it's gonna be the doctor thing, right? Just just, just get this doctor role going in there and graduate, mm -hmm. go to med school, where everything's gonna be gravy. Um, but at that point, I I don't think I really realized how hard it would be. Mm -hmm. and how tough it would be because at that point you're going to college i mean you just try to have a good time and chill and do whatever you're not thinking five years ten years from now you know what i mean so at that point uh, I, I did i took biology uh major checked it off it was good took the classes mm -hmm. it was fun it was good i had a lot of fun a lot of, i learned a lot of things um but at, at that point when i finally graduated 
like I said, we're not going to talk about the physics class, but when I finally graduated, I realized <laughs> that this stuff is not something I think I want to pursue. A, right, because right. if I wanted to go to medical school, I was going to do that for another five, six years. Mm. Plus, if I wanted to do a, a focus on a specialty, mm. that would take another six, five, six, 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 five years or whatever. So right. I would be in school for probably another 10 years. Plus, thinking about all those student loans that I would have in my pocket, oh, that was something that I wasn't willing to even accept, mm-hmm. you know. So and I, and I was I was broke, you know, I didn't have any right, money right. either. So, like, something had to give. So, at that point, I realized, okay, well, I can either go this path or figure, figure out something else. And, of course, all my brothers, everyone's doing computer science and guys were thriving in that role. And I'm like, okay, well, let me give this a shot. So, I, I right. don't know how it happened, but I happened. I found somebody's shell scripting book. Mm. Um, like bash shell scripting and I, uh-huh. I picked it up and I just looked at it and I'm like this is this is kind of cool you know I mean it makes sense Man. to me and it was so when I did it, it just clicked mm. um, so when when that happened I realized okay this might be something I can you know put my focus in um, so at that point then I started you know try to see if I can get a job in the whole computer science field or whatever um, so I, I, I took a, a, a cert it's a um, CIA come a cert for links or whatever so after i passed mm-hmm. that cert, I was, I was able to put it out on my resume mm-hmm. and i was able to get a job at tangible up uh, in, in virginia mm-hmm. um at that point i did the i did um it hub desk mm-hmm. um so doing that part of it was something that kind of got me exposed to everything you know computer science not computer science but like it stuff right? yeah 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 everything yeah. In that. so that kind of opened my eyes just to get my foot in the door because at that point i knew nothing you know mm-hmm. so learning on the on the job as i went was something that was very 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 important to me and at that point, then I realized, okay, well, I can do this, but I still want, want to do the whole bio, biology thing too as well. And I figured I might just take it to another level. So at that point, I went to, I went to grad school at Hopkins and I got, you know, I did the bioinformatics and, uh, degree. And what the bioinformatics degree gave me was it allowed me to combine biology and computer science in the same thing as well. Um, so when I did that, that was like a whole new world for me because that just blew me up. You know, because right, right. like I'm sitting in the room with guys who's been doing this for like years and, you know, and, and, and just me just starting off, it was very intimidating. And at that point, and I realized then that to be good at something, you got to dedicate yourself in and out to it. You know, so right, what I right, did right. was like, I just, I would just I lock myself in the room for two, three hours <laughs> a day and just really just bang these things out, you know, like, and, and talking to one of our one of our friends Tyrell you had him on the podcast last week oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he was the guy that really like helped me out because at that point I was I was trying to I was writing code in pro I never done anything in pro before in my life and it was very <laughs> very complicated uh-huh. so he was the guy that I, I would send him some stuff he would give me some feedback and help me out so like you sure he didn't give you the answers though he just didn't give you the answers he wasn't giving no answers yeah Tyrell don't give no answers yeah he provided he provided a lot of guidance to us then and, and that, that i really appreciated from him at that point um so when i graduated you know i got my master's everything made sense to go at that point i knew for a fact that the bio stuff had to go because i was never going to use it anywhere i went so when mm-hmm. i just used the informatics part of it computer science part of it and just around with it and at yeah. that point uh i realized okay well you know i, I know I met, I met my wife you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and at that point she was, she was living in California. So I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, let's, let's see what's up, you know? So right. got a job and, you know, I was out there, you know? Yeah, you look yeah, back yeah. since. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm Just come back, back home, bro. Come back home. Nah, that's dope though, man. You know, like you, you made a full, a crazy transition. We're talking about biology to bioinformatics. You know, to uh, you know, there's some system administration stuff. You uh, yeah, know, I, infrastructure. I did, yeah, when Odin. I got to, yeah, when I got to uh, to go to Cali, and that's when you, you start meeting some 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 beasts. You know, mm-hmm. some guys who've been like like Silicon guys, Valley type dudes. Like yeah, like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not about going to the beach and getting party and getting high all the time. I'm telling you, right. like, guys right. work. They work hard over here. Mm-hmm. You know, and those guys that I, I was able to lean on, um, and those guys kind of show me the ropes. You know, and the assignment stuff from that. I, you know, I graduated and did the assistant engineering stuff. And from that point, I realized, okay, what can I do more? And right. then I found, you know, 
cloud, you know, how can I, how can I mm. be a beast in that, you know? So, and I started doing that stuff. And from that point, I realized, okay, I'm in there. What more can I do with the cloud? And it's so big. Yeah, the yeah. Everything, you know, because you're sitting around looking like, how can I do a lot of things with this? And I realized, okay, well, now let's do that. Uh, so now my current role is that as an infrastructure engineer, you know, I do a lot of these things. Well, we'll wait till, we'll wait till we get to that part. But pretty much at my current role right now is just pretty much help customers, you know, migrate solutions and applications to the cloud. Um, so yeah. we provide uh, best practices, feedback, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how well you can, you know, better be, uh, we call them cloudy customers, right? How right. can you be a better cloud, you know, uh, enabler in, a, in a, whatever platform you choose? So we're specializing in every cloud provider except for Google Cloud. Okay, right? okay. Um, so and that's something that we've been working on um, heavily over the last couple of months is how can we migrate stuff and test out Google Cloud as well. So. That's something we've been working on. So yeah, so that pretty much, you know, to sum it all up is like, yeah, it's, it's every, everyone's path is different. Mine just happened to be that route that he took. Um, yeah. And yeah, I am. So it's something I really enjoy doing. And that's, you know. No, nah, that's good, man. And, and uh, you know, that's something to say about that computer route, right? Like everybody always talks about, um, you know, computer science, a couple of computer tech and things like that, you know, like that's, that's where everybody's going. You know, I mean, you can't, there's no doubt about it, you know, and a lot of times I, I talk about like, even those roles are not really going away, you know, it's only going to be kind of managing it, you know, when you start getting the machines involved, you get AI and all that stuff, you exactly. know, you still got to have uh, some type of technology, um, like background and stuff, which will help you out in the future with the way the world's going, man. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, man, I, I definitely appreciate y'all being on the podcast. So, uh, so, I mean, we talked about I owe you going into bioinformatics. Uh, Kenny, you was in the computer science. Um, and, and then we have other roles out. You got other majors out there that you could have chosen, but, uh, what, what's your thoughts on like, what makes y'all kind of stand out, you know, from a computer science or bioinformatics standpoint, getting into that, that, that type of realm, you know, um, versus like a computer technology, Kenny, or just sticking with biology or something like that, you know, does that make you more flexible with your careers? Like, have you been able to go out and, and, um, and, and, and handle any role, right? You know, where you're able to say like that, you know, because I can think outside about code or something like that, whatever it is, you know, that y'all see as a benefit to computer science or to bioinformatics or to any type of that programming section, you know, like that we had to deal with. Um, do you see that as uh, being able to help out more with you being able to accept any role you know, at all. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, computer science, like, like the classes, like we took discrete structures, like that was uh, just, I want to say it was like dealing with and or situations like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if this, or like, uh, what was it called? Like transitive properties of, mm -hmm. of equations and things like that. Like, you know, dealing with those type of situations and Man, those physics and math classes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. Those, them joints right there. Like, yeah, everybody don't get those, right? Computer bro. technology don't get it, you know? Yeah, like, uh, they, wouldn't, they weren't required. Yeah. But they yeah. was required for computer science and just, like, having to deal with calculus and the physics, man. Those two right there, like, those forced you to just think right. critically uh problem solving like all that type of stuff and you just had to figure it out like dealing with Golubev and trying to defend your answers <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to defend your answers in class and you or like like for the final exam he'll give you three questions and then he'll be like defend it yeah exactly it's not about <laughs> your because at the end of the day you get you could actually have a, a correct answer whatever it is like it doesn't matter your answer can be right if you can prove it right but you know exactly. that was the whole thing and he, and he, and he wanted <laughs> you to show your work like write out the whole equation show me your thought process throughout this whole thing and tell me how you got to your answer like right. he didn't care if it was right or wrong like it could be completely wrong but mm -hmm. he, would give you, he would give you points just for at least being in the ballpark or at least explaining your thought process throughout that whole thing Mm -hmm. So like things like that definitely helped out or I will say helped me out um, because now like when I approach problems and I think about it, like I have to, I take myself, I step back 
I think about it, I'm like, all right, cool. Let me think about it, see what's going on, and then I attack. And then I approach it because, you know, you have to think about it first before you attack it. So you're not just like blindly going into it, just trying to figure something out. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Definitely, man. What about you, Ayo, man? You feel like uh, taking that bioinformatics route has really helped you be able to tackle anything? I mean, because you, you think about it, you went from biology to bioinformatics. You got a, you got a glimpse of what computer science is really like, you know, with the programming and things like that. And being able to do programming in general as a major and take that and now you're doing infrastructure or, or you know, infrastructure as a service or whatever it is with cloud or something like that. You know, have you felt like it helped you tackle those type of things? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like for me, I see computer science more as a gateway to all the things, right? Mm -hmm. Because it it develops you a a foundation on how you can approach a lot of problem solving. Because when you think about it, right, like taking a a computer science class and taking a, a, let's say like C++ or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You take the class and you, you learn basic syntaxes and stuff like that. And you go mm-hmm. to another language, right? Like, you know, Python or whatever, or Golang. Right, Most right. of the time, the syntax is going to kind of almost be the same, right? Right, right. And at that, at that point, you start tying two and two together, right? Mm-hmm. So we buy informatics at that point. It's all about computer science and, and bio, like, because how can you, most of the time when we they sequence the human genome, it's all code-based stuff that somebody wrote, right? Mm-hmm. To actually enable them to, to be able to sequence those things, right? So at that point, I see it's like bi- bioinformatics was a, a door that opened for me because it was able to actually lead me into the direction like say how can I think critically and how can I think outside the box right because right, right. you, you're given a problem to solve it and at that point you're thinking okay how can I approach this without actually you know without solving it how would you mm. approach it without actually solving it at that point and that's right. how that's what it did for me because like I said Dylan coming to an environment where I knew nothing was mm-hmm. something that I really had to like learn first Right, you know, because right. you, you, you get a you get a project, you, you dive right into it. And you realize you got to go back and refactor it 20, 20 more times, right? Right, right, right. Isn't it, isn't it better for you to approach it first, create a design document? How, mm-hmm. how can I fulfill all these requirements and scope of this project before I go further than that? If you can get from A to A to Z, like, mm-hmm. that's easy because writing the code is not hard. Right, architect right. right. Architecture it, it is the hardest part, I think, for any yeah. kind of solution, right? I agree. Because if you keep writing whatever and going from you know doing whatever you want you're going to go back and have a really messed up project because i i know because i've done it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no doubt man no <laughs> doubt about that so, and i and I, th- and I think those skills that i learned was something like you know like you know algorithms 101 or whatever that i had to take mm-hmm. that made no sense to me but it made sense now when i work with what i work with because it tells you okay well a has to happen before b can happen Mm-hmm. And that's how it works. So for me, yeah. that was more of the more that was more of a key, you know, like how can you structure, you know, your environment and and and, and your code base to achieve a certain goal rather than just going, you know, with your head cut off and just doing whatever. Right, right. <laughs> it definitely, <laughs> it definitely teaches kind of like that process, right? Like how yes. to go back, step back. Like Kenny was saying, take a step back. Like you were saying, I will take you take that step back, and you analyze everything, and you completely like the architecture is more important. You know, I mean, I, I remember having an interview with Google and they didn't care about any, any, any freaking like syntax example or anything like that. They was like, how do you do the algorithm? Like, how do you do the architecture of it? You know what, what I'm saying? Like, the, pseudo, the pseudo code or something exactly. like that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, that was what pseudo they care about. And I was like, what? You know? So uh, needless to say, I didn't get that job. <laughs> but, but It's all good. It's all good. Though. You're still where you at now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, but I still love Google. I mean, I use y'all every day, you know, to solve problems, you know? Right. <laughs> so no doubt about that, you know, but. But one of the things that stood out to me when having a conversation with y'all earlier about this was that, you know, y'all are both into DevOps, you know, and, and that's an important field that a lot of people don't really talk about, right? They talk about development. They talk about, too, even the buzzword IT, I mean, data science now, right? Data science is big now, you know, uh, you, you have programmers, you got network people, you got server analysts, whatever it is, you got all these different different people, right? But And you got all these different professions, but nobody really talks about DevOps, right? And what that means and stuff, you know. And so DevOps is an inter- uh, is a, is an important part throughout the process. When we talk about like being able to uh, have a flow, 
like a workflow for applications to get from one place to another. Um, that's like that whole operations piece, you know. Um, and and I know IO, I know uh, Kenny, y'all deal with the migration of applications to be able to get from point A to point B into the cloud a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know IO, we talked about automation, right? Like, and and automation is like important is more important than what people think. And for me, I remember when I was younger. Um, and I was a programmer. I met a guy who was my mentor at the time, and he said, I want to automate myself out of a job. And I was like, what do you mean by that? You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, automating yourself out of a job is key because you never want to stay at one job at, at, at a certain time. And I'm not going to go into that, but the automating yourself out of a job was an important uh, mindset that I had to take on because what he what he brought was that whole automation piece. That automation piece was was key to me because nobody did automation back then like 10 years ago or whatever nobody really cared as much about it right they was doing still they they weren't doing it to the point where they are now right you got the kubernetes right we talk about we got all these different things that do orchestration where it says i'm going to deploy all these apps and i can take them down all at one time and do all this stuff you know i i get less uh resources over here i'm going to deploy more resources needed i'm going to deploy an app real quick it's going to be automatically yeah. coming up and so uh i how important do you see automation being in this world now, you know, with this stuff that you do? Yeah. Uh, for me, like automation is, I, I, in my opinion, I think it will be a key mm -hmm. principle of DevOps when you think about it. Right. Like right. If, if, if I come to your job and I see you doing the same task over and over again, like you're going to have a problem. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. If uh -huh. you can, if you can automate it, automate it because it's going to save you time effort money in the long run right mm -hmm. um so i mean thinking about it from a sysadmin standpoint right you write a bash shell script to do you know copy files move whatever create directories blah 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 mm -hmm. that's 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 a simple task that can be done easily right All right but All right. when we when we talk about you know apps in the cloud when you talk about migration when you talk about you know scaling up and scaling down we, we, it gets a little hairy at that point, right? Because at that point, there is no way impossible for you to do that manually. You can, mm. but why would you want to, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because it doesn't make any sense, especially when, you, when you're dealing with a ton of resources that you have to manage all at once, um, especially with infrastructure, right? Because at that point, you do have to stand up a lot of infrastructure to house those applications that come from down from, from developers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so at that point, you think to yourself, okay, how can I create reusable infrastructure where I can take anywhere, deploy and runs? How can I remove it when I'm done? How can I mm -hmm. scale up, scale down, scale out, scale in? Mm -hmm. Those things are, are factors that you have to think about when thinking about migration to the cloud because not everything must go to the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. Certain things that you know for sure that, okay, I know we need it. Is it going to be cost worthy? Mm -hmm. Let's do it, right? So at that point, you're thinking, like, okay, well, for example, you know, using like confirmation templates and stuff like that, right? Where you can build out multiple, you know, infrastructure and like, example, like multiple S3 buckets, whatever, mm -hmm. right? You want to be, you, just, you deploy the, the, the template and it, it, it goes in there and does everything you needed to do, right? Right, without right? you doing you just, it yourself. Without right? you doing anything, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to go into console and do create bucket, you know, 10 times? <laughs> <laughs> right? like, it, yeah. it makes no sense. You know, so like automation has to be a focal point for any company that wants to, you know, do anything in the cloud. Because right. at some point, when you need to test your applications, you want to have the same amount of resources in different environments. So mm -hmm. you only have you only have to develop the code one time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and deploy it out three three times, four times. So from dev stage to production, you know for sure that by the time I get to production, everything mm -hmm. I have is going to be the same. Right. Yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, unforeseen circumstances, circumstances can happen where things can can blow up in your face. But mm -hmm. at that point, you know, for a fact that once I do point A from point A to point C, I got the same code base. Right. 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 That's, that's, key. That's, that's key. That is key. You know, and, and, it, and it amazes me that sometimes that some companies don't do this. You know, mm -hmm. they test they test a lot of stuff locally, you know, mm -hmm. on their laptop. <laughs> And deploy that stuff out, and everything just blows up. And I asked, okay, what happened? Because you, right, didn't, right. you didn't test. Yeah, you didn't test you didn't it in the production. You didn't test like, it like, in your like, uh, if, if, like, true if, test environment. 
if I walked into a company and they told me that's what they did, I'll walk right back out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's going to create more work, more problems for you and stuff, more, you know. <laughs> you, you, can't, you just can't work like that, you know. Uh -huh. So, like, you know, if you know, infrastructure is cold, you know, like, you know, Terraform, you know, Ansible, uh, confirmation templates and stuff like that, those tools are already there for you to use that, you know, because uh -huh. those things that, you know, like I said, back to what we talked about earlier, creating those, the code is easy. Uh -huh. Architecture is the hard part. So once you architect what you design that you want, all you have to do is put that thing on paper, check it into revision, you know, and and and, and you're good to go. So every right. time that you you deploy any new any new code base, you stand it back up with the same code, stand your application up on it, and it, you're good to go. Right, you know? right. So that's why I feel like automation has to be a key focal point for any company that needs to do these things because you can't just continue to you know go around and just hope things work out because it just never does. You know, right, so right, right. It, it, it's something that needs to happen all the time. And I think, you know, when we talk about, you know, CICD pipelines as well, that's automation, right? Because mm -hmm. when you, when you uh, check anything into revision, you should have something that kicks off like a, a unit test, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, or like some like type have, of like, next you know, task or something like yeah, that, you know, to do. Like, the, like you got Jenkins and Travis, right? So mm -hmm. when, you, when you check it in, Jenkins fires up a job that, that checks your code base, right? Mm -hmm running against all the unit tests that you've written to do those things. So right. uh, unit, unit test is automation. Jenkins mm -hmm. is orchestration, uh, orchestrating your automation that runs in the background when you check your code into revision. Right, so you right. check your code in, C CI picks in, runs it, tests it, gives, gives you a pass or fill, pass, if it passes, move to the next stage. Right, right. right. You know, so you have this flow of automation that's happening that by the time you get to deployment, ship it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. and that's why I respect like Netflix, like um, they have a lot of tools, all open source, that they use to do a lot of their testing and development. And I think a lot of people have been using that to to much better their business because I think Netflix is the 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 guys that actually do all the heavy lifting for for mm -hmm. the cloud community. So yeah, so with, with 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 automation and stuff, I mean we definitely see it kind of taking control and stuff like that, you know. Um, and there's and it's almost it's it's almost like uh, it's kind of blatant. Like you, you see it, you see it happening. You see artificial intelligence getting involved. You see all those type of things getting involved. You know, uh, Kenny, do you think like, do you think that? Um, I mean, what's your thoughts on automation? And then also, like, do you think that? Um, uh, do you think that that's something that that is needed, right? Do you think that that's something that that you should, um, or or do you think that it's always going to, or is there such thing as too much automation? Mm, I don't think it's too much automation. Like coming from my role personally, mm -hmm. like we have a um, a lot of small tasks. So mm -hmm. like like I was saying, like you want to do something small, just automate it and just get it done with. So you don't have to spend your time just click click click. Instead of just click click click, you just spend what like one day to just do it for the rest of your life and just be right. <laughs> right, so, you don't right. Have, so you don't have to ever think about it again and you know like i'm starting to learn that now in this role like before in my previous roles like you know we didn't have to deal with numerous customers or numerous uh users so you know we just dealt with say like 100 people 200 people like you know it was nothing to spin up a vm here or do this there. right but now we're, you're, where you're dealing with like 500 people, 500, right, right. thousands of customers, and you have to do this like constantly, constantly. It's just like automation is like definitely like, oh, wow. <laughs> I see the importance of it now. And, you know, it, it also, I want to say, eliminates like the human error mm -hmm. factor because yeah. like, you know, Great. Good point. Like, I, like I was saying, if you have the code base that's already there and you're spinning up in the background the infrastructure for it, and you're manually doing that if you're manually spinning up these things and something messes up like that messes up the whole code base and then they're like oh man is it the code no it was you yeah you yeah. <laughs> yeah you didn't mess, you it, up mess, you mess it up on a or b you might have so, messed it up on c right here <laughs> right. so you know if you automate that you know you have to test out the automation part as well and you test out the automation part and make sure that that's a smooth process before you like can say all right boom this is a good, mm -hmm. this is a good product right here. Agreed. So once you get that baseline good, then you're like, all right, cool. Um, it's right there and it has no human 
error factor in, in it. So that automation process is definitely like very valuable, and very unique for. Yeah, man, apps. definitely. No, that's a great point, man. And, you know, um, people, people don't really talk about automation as much as they should, you know, and I think I go back to like my, my mentor at the time, you know, I think automation is, you should try to automate yourself out of a job, you know, hypothetically, you know, <laughs> you don't want to lose a job, but you that should be your goal to kind of make, make stuff as, uh, Easy as as less, possible. yeah, easy as possible, exactly. <laughs> you know, and so you know, automation and DevOps, you know, that kind of foster, fosters like speed, uh, uh, like accuracy, consistency, reliability. You know, all that stuff. As as Agreed. from what y'all are saying, you know, Agreed. and it increases like the number of deliveries too, because you probably can can do way more deliveries now that you have stuff automated, right? I can scale. I can scale now, you know, because uh, when you're manually doing it, you get burned out. You can't scale like that, you know, so uh, y'all are making great points, man. But, you know, thank you for listening to the data is my science podcast, the show that makes data your passion with your host, Dapper Data.